Sleep tight, Dudorino. Mm -hmm. So, it's finally here, Pelorian's Obsidian Arc, uh, the final, or the first project to follow up Agalock's final CD, which will not be mentioned again here because it's garbage and ass. Um, so, the founder of the band, John Holm, uh, actually separated from the rest of his band members, the rest of which went on to form Granada. Um, so here we are with this first release. Uh, he's forming this with uh, members of a couple other U.S. black metal groups, uh, most notably uh, Iwata, Iwata I, I believe is the name. Um, that's a, a very talented group in and of themselves, uh, melodic black metal. I believe there are also some other members who I'm not aware of and I'm not really concerned about. Um, but So what is this project? Well, Eric? Well... In short, it's basically Agalock Light to me, is all I can really sum it up as. I mean, it doesn't necessarily sound exactly like Agalock, except for one certain track, which we'll get to later. But it seems like a continuation of a more slightly proggy, I don't know if I would say proggy, it's atmospheric. Darker. Darker is a good way to put it. It's, it's kind of like Agalock's bigger, meaner, idiot brother. It has a lot of the same tones, and it has a lot of the same riffs, but it also has a more malevolent front to it. It's definitely more atmospheric, but it also feels more bare-bones in a lot of ways, too. And that comes down to some of the production choices, but it really comes down to the songwriting, uh, which harkens back to some of their earlier works, where they were more so kind of like a folky black metal project, but yeah. these are even more straightforward than that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, in, in spots, anyways. Yeah, it doesn't have quite the over influence that the first album or two does, but it does kind of lean more towards that rather than the the doomy feelings of Morrow of the Spirit. It's it's basically a continuation of the last album in a lot of regards. I feel. Oh yeah, yeah. Which leads us right into kind of the pros and cons here. Um, so how does the album stack up as opposed to some of their previous works and? How might it stack up against some of the ex-members going on and forming their own kind of folky project? Well, that's where we kind of get into the mixed bag section. Because it's not a bad album. This is actually a pretty average album in almost all regards. Um, but it has a lot of inconsistencies, and that's going to be a big word here. Because tonally, uh, songwriting-wise, almost all over the place... Uh, it just has a lot of quirks, and not the good kind. Um, I feel like this particular album, though it really tries its hardest to kind of put up this malevolent front, it really has a lot of the same traits as Agalock, and even subconsciously maybe, I'm, I'm sure John Holm is writing these songs with the intention of creating a new band, but uh, unfortunately a lot of his bad habits uh, have been creeping into this one as well from his last project. Um, the songwriting is super wonky at points. Um, a lot of the riffs are just uh, uninteresting or, or not particularly exciting, I should say. Um, there's, there's a lot of excellent material in here, but you almost have to sift through it to get to it. Yeah, and the front half of the album, well, not exactly the front half, I would say the first three songs, personally, are just very bland, just very boring. Yeah. I just don't really find myself interested until track number four, Four Giant Crucible, which, as you were stating earlier before we started filming, that it's it's a little disjointed in how it's put together. Oh, yeah. But I only really like that one because it sounds different from everything else on the album. Right. It doesn't run together like most of the rest of the album. Right, no, it doesn't. And uh, so it stands out in that regard. It's not a particularly amazing song. It's just more aggressive and has some more death metal elements rather than the atmospheric black elements right. from the rest of the album. So just massive inconsistency right off the front to me. And then Astigi Empire, the song after Four Giant Crucible, is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's better than the first three tracks, in my opinion. But For sure. 
And that's why it was probably chosen as a single. It's one of the, the more immediately attention-grabbing tracks. And then track number six, I don't even... I've listened to the album six times, and I just have nothing really to say about it. It's just right. very bland to me. And then, basically, the last song is interesting in that it sounds like an Agalock song. It like, really it's does. It's the most Agalock sounding of all the songs, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, which is, I mean, a good thing and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. For one, it definitely sounds like something that you'd want to put out as a single. It sounds like something that's definitely on the upper upper limits of what this project can do. But the bigger issue is that, tonally, it doesn't fit anywhere on the project. You've got these really insidious cuts, you've got these really dark narrations, uh, a lot of religious overtones, and this one does as well in some aspects, but it doesn't have the same nature. It has almost word for word the same kind of Agalock style uh, lyrics, it has the same kind of riffs, has the same kind of transitions. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just it just lacks any of the character that this is, is going for. I, clearly, John Holm wants something very particular about this project, and even though it's very hit or miss, you can kind of tell what he's going for. This this final track just doesn't do it. It's it's good. It's it's a it's an adequate Agalog song, but it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything with the tone of the album before it. It's a great ending piece, but I mean it doesn't. Essentially, it doesn't really add anything. It doesn't really fit in with the rest of the songs. No, it no. Sound, it sounds to me like a B-side from Marvel and the Spirit. Right. Or something to that it's, effect. It's, if you will, let me metaphor, metaphor ramble here for a minute. It's essentially, you've got the first three-fourths of this album, which is like a painting of a corpse on a cross with a man kicking it in the dick. And the last song is a puzzle piece of a dark foresty landscape and it just it doesn't it, the pieces don't they don't match they don't match at all i see what you're saying yeah. the tonality changes no yeah so it's just wildly inconsistent right well it does have a lot of good qualities here in there though i mean even you know both of us can totally agree that it's not a bad cd at all no. it's just one that lacks any immediacy it lacks really any any punch to it as far as the songwriting goes. Um, really, there's there's pieces here and there where you can tell uh, John Holm was, was getting very progged out. He was he was very subconsciously just punching in some Agalog pieces here and there. You've got these like these quiet whispered bits in one of the tracks where it sounds like it's coming from the left and right channels and it, it gives me a very Agalog feel. It, 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 a lot of those little strange pieces just feel like cut-ins from Agalock tracks. Um, there are pieces that don't feel like that. They, there are some fresh and innovative ideas every once in a while where you can tell that, that maybe other members are adding things in or maybe he's uh, specifically trying to create some new and interesting sounds. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, there, there are some, some good aspects here and there, but with how spotty it is, it, it's just very difficult to get through, sift through, and find. Yeah, it was just hard for me to listen to because of how spotty it was. I listened to it six, seven times. And right. I, just, <clears throat> I found myself zoning out and losing focus more often than not. And so it was hard for me to get a coherent opinion because it just didn't capture me like almost all the Agalock material has. So, and I hate to keep coming back to Agalock as a comparison. Right. Because it's technically a new band with mostly new members, but the main principal songwriter is there, so it's hard not to. Yeah, and that needs to be said. It does it need really to be does. said. And I just feel like it doesn't capture any of the things I liked about Agalock. Well, right. for the most part. Even even with a with a broad a broad concept, a broad new concept, um, it, it just doesn't accomplish enough with, with what it wants to do. Um, it sets out just trying to create something darker and meaner, maybe a little bit more back to basics, but essentially it, it just it just doesn't get that tone across, it, not consistently anyways. It, it feels almost kind of try-hard in spots, honestly. While I really appreciate the lyrics, I actually think the lyrics on here are very good. From what I've read, it, it just it has a lot of uh, emphasis on religious tones and it's, it's, it has a lot of philosophy behind it as well. Um, but it's just, you know, with those issues said. I would recommend not listening to this if you want more Agalock-like music, and I would listen to Gallo Brave instead. Yeah.
Same. Galibrate is the best you can do besides Agaloc if you're looking for more Agaloc. Yeah, I would I would <laughs> wait for the for the other members project if you want something a little bit more folky. You might even listen to Sayor. Sayor does essentially the same thing with more of an emphasis on the folk elements. Yeah. Um, or but, Irish Celtic themed right. music, but still longish songs with a very atmospheric tinge to them. Right. Yeah. There, there is actually an EP that just came out uh, about a week or two ago, and that actually has a Stygian Pyre on it as well as an unreleased track, and that that track is actually fairly good as well. This isn't a mini review of it or anything, but if you want to get the most out of this project without slogging through a lot of these just really awkward, sloppy songs, you can get most of that out of this EP just a lot easier I feel like so yeah not not a promotion of that EP but uh, there there is some potential in here and that does need to be said uh, further projects I I'm excited to see where it goes but at the present I'm not impressed I'm fairly underwhelmed by most of the material on here so you know. yeah I agree completely I don't really have much else to add nope I, I think personally I'd, I'd give it a six it's a little above average but that's about it yeah, I would probably give it a six as well. Hopefully they can do better in the future, write something more captivating. Yep, I, I like the premise. Yeah, I, I think that it's, I think it's an interesting idea. It uh, just needs further development. So I uh, can't wait to see where that goes. But at the present, boring, bland, mediocre, want to sleep. So as always, thank well, you for checking in. and Thanks, guys. This, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.